as one might expect, as production shifted back to the consumer economy after the war, St. Louis was a big beneficiary of that. At one point, several city fathers were claiming that St. Louis would become one of the largest, if not the second largest automobile manufacturer in the country, second only to Detroit. Now there were, by the end of the 50s, there were three, all three of the big three had major plants here. And as you can see, they were turning out 700,000 cars and trucks a year. Now, not surprisingly, the big three, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler, dominated the automobile market in the United States. And this Newsweek cover from 1965 suggests just that. A look at the article inside doesn't even mention foreign producers. So both auto manufacturing in the country and auto manufacturing in St. Louis were in the midst of a boom time. And nothing conveys this more than the Corvette which was built in St. Louis for nearly 30 years. General Motors, particularly Harley Earl, were looking at Europe in the early 1950s saying, you know, there's a type of vehicle being built over there that we haven't seen yet here in the States. Kind of a two-seat road sportster, and maybe we in General Motors should kind of jump on what could be very popular. So GM looked around and said, okay, let's maybe look within the uh, Chevrolet division and come up with a prototype. We'll introduce it at the 1953 Autorama in Detroit. And you'll see in this photograph the car they introduced. It was built largely for style, not speed. It was intended to be powered by Chevrolet's Blue Flame 6, but with its lightweight fiberglass body and incredible shapes, the car was immediately popular. John Motors said, okay, Chevrolet, let's build 300 of them up in our Flint, Michigan plant and see how those go. They're all going to be white. They're all basically going to be the same car. Those sold like hotcakes, leading General Motors to look around all its plants and say, okay, where can we build this car? We don't have room to continue doing so up in Flint. So let's look around. How about the building at the St. Louis plant built in 1921 as our Fisher Auto Body Building. No, it's not air conditioned. Uh, no, it doesn't even have a good roof. In fact, rain and snow are falling through that roof, but let's run with it. And that's what happened. The Corvettes were first built here in St. Louis in the spring of 1953. You can see here a great shot of the Omaha Tangier Shriners with their new Corvettes. That club would buy out of their own pocketbooks the Corvettes either every year or every other year in the late 50s through the 60s and use those Corvettes as part of charity events. Because the cars were special, special orders, uh, normally RPOs for paint color, they would have to take delivery of the cars from the plant here in St. Louis. They couldn't just run down to the dealership and get them. When they obtained the cars, they would line up for a group photo shot somewhere here in St. Louis. Usually it was right outside the plant, but this particular year in 1965, you can see they 